What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel, The Golden Perspective. Today, once again, it's Monday, so what are we gonna do? We are going to look at the Glass Notes Insight. This is week 39, 2021. Before we get started, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Thank you to all those who have. While you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notifications and follow the link in the description for my library account. You will definitely want to get started on Odyssey Library. It's the same thing, just in a different package. Get to know that ecosystem, get paid to watch, create content, share content, very cool. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this video. My one request is that you please be civil in your discourse. Kindness and compassion are absolutely free. And if we use it, I think we can make the world the place we'd like to see more of. It's a place, place I'd like to see more of. Anyhow, let's get into it. The Week on Chain, Week 39, 2021. Exploring the bull and bear cases for the current market structure, as well as a deep dive into our new Lightning Network metrics. The Bitcoin market experienced volatile downside price action this week, opening at 47,328 on Monday and sliding down to 39,876. The sell-off comes alongside continued pressure on the industry from regulators, a sell-off in equities market, challenging conditions in Chinese debt markets, and yet another Bitcoin ban in China. <clears throat> alongside this uncertainty, the week was full of exciting and positive news related to both El Salvador's adoption and Twitter's implementation of the Bitcoin Lightning Network. We are also excited to release a suite of Lightning Network charts and dashboards to track the performance and adoption of the Lightning Network protocol, LN. In this week's newsletter, we will explore both the bull and bear sides of the current market conditions on chain, as well as a deep dive into our new Lightning Network metrics. <clears throat> Only the hodlers remain. The relatively low utilization of Bitcoin block space has been widely discussed of late, with a case to be made on both sides as to whether it is bullish or bearish, or both. The bull case is that, as a result of growing adoption of uh, efficient transaction techniques such as SegWit, transaction batching, and usage of Lightning Network, bear case is that 50% correction in May resulted in a flushing out of many retail traders and investors and thus interest in the protocol has waned since early 2021. The most likely case is both of these are in effect. The chart below shows that transaction counts have been, have indeed declined since May, returning to what could be considered a bearish on-chain activity channel. Higher transaction counts are characteristic of bullish conditions as new entrants swarm into the network and demand for block space increases accordingly. Conversely, Lower transaction demand can signal fewer market participants are active and less relative interest in the asset. Transaction counts are currently at around 175,000 to 200,000 transactions per day, which are similar levels seen in the 2018 bear market. <clears throat> you can see this uh, band written here or, or drawn here looking at uh, uh, levels on sort of a uh, upward trending bear market capture, okay? So, as exchanges increasingly deploy transaction batching techniques, processing multiple client withdrawals in a single transaction, transaction counts alone can be misleading. Thus, we must also assess the number of active on-chain entities. We can see, however, that a very similar pattern is in play, which speaks to the more bearish case of reduced participation being a dominant driver. This adds weight to the argument that the market may be dominated by hodlers and traders with less participation by newer entrants and retail speculators. We can confirm this by looking at the entity's net growth metric, which describes the difference between new on-chain entrants, holding new coins, and those leaving the network spending all their coins. Here we can see with each market cycle a rising floor value of new entities. This describes Bitcoin reaching a wider audience over time and the size of uh, the consistently buying hodler base. We can also see that bull markets experience a steep increase in new participants, many of which slow down after market tops. 
The current market has returned to the upper bound of the 2002, uh, 2018 to 20 bear market baseline around 13,000 new entities per day. <clears throat> The assessment we can take away from this is that the highest likelihood is that the majority of today's market participants are longer term hodlers and accumulators. The question is, can they hold the line and provide sufficient buy support? If we look to the per, uh, percent entities in profit, we can take two observations. Around 9.6% of entities hold coins that were accumulated during August and September and are now underwater, held at an unrealized loss. This represents a 58% retracement of the August high, suggesting a non-trivial number of buyers from May, June, sorry, May to July look, uh, took profits on the way up. This fractal is remarkably similar to the July-October recovery after the March 2020 sell-off. <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. We also see this March 2020 recovery fractal in the short-term hodler MR, MVRV. This metric will trade at 1.0 when price is equal to the on-chain cost basis of short-term holders. After a capitulation event, MVRV is less than 1.0 and relief rally MVRV is greater than 1.0. Short-term holders who accumulate on the way up are having their conviction to hold tested. Prices have returned to the cost basis of short-term holders. Given we estimate about 58% of them are already underwater, the key question is whether these buyers from August and September will sell their coins at a loss and drive prices lower. The other question is whether the hodlers who remain can provide enough buy side to support if they do. Conviction to hodl. To answer the second half of this question, we assess the conviction to hodl by existing uh, coin holders amidst fairly historic volatility and many rolls of the FUD dice. We start with the coin days destroyed 90 metric, the CDD 90, which calculates the cumulative sum of lifespan spent over the last 90 days. This metric will peak when large volumes of old coins are spent, usually in bull markets, and decline during periods of accumulation and hodling. The CDD 90 is currently trading at a very low levels of around 150,000 CDD. This level is coincident with the periods of larger large scale accumulation, including both early bull markets and later stage bear markets. So if you look at that, both of those are about maybe about twice the width, you know? So we'll see. <clears throat> we can also see that the relative supply held by short-term holders has reached an all-time low of 20% in circulating supply. This is a rare occurrence that has historically described the late stage accumulation periods of bear markets by the smarter money. This also manifests as a multi-year low in highly liquid supply, a metric that has returned to the December 2018 levels. Highly liquid coins are those that are located on exchanges and other venues where coins can trivially change hands with the click of a button. We can confirm this downtrend is influenced with, uh, by the withdrawal of coins from exchanges, which continues at a significant rate. The exchange net position change metric demonstrates a clear change in character and market preference following March 2020. The market shifted from a regime of dominant inflows to one of outflows. July to September has been a historically significant period of net outflows, ranging between 80,000 and 100,000 BTC per month. As coins migrate out of highly liquid exchange balances and into investor wallets, they start to mature. Initially, these coins are likely to be respent in response to market volatility, but over time, they are increasingly considered illiquid, dormant, and more likely to remain in cold storage. These transitional coins are referred to as liquid supply, which we can see has been in a macro decline since 2016. If we consider the total supply of highly liquid and liquid coins, we have 3.117 M of HL, uh, highly liquid, plus 100, so that's 3.117 million of Bitcoin, plus 1.299 million of the liquid coins, equaling 434 
6 million BTC freely circulating, which is about 23% of the circulating supply. The converse of the above charts is that long-term holders now hold an all-time high of over 80% of the circulating BTC. Of note, in the 2021 cycle is the relatively small distribution of coins that occurred in the Q1 2021 bull compared to previous cycles. Long-term holder supply drew down only 67.7% of the supply, where previous cycles were between 54% and 58%. We can also note the speed of the recovery, which indicates that 12.3% of the circulating supply was accumulated in the 2020-2021 uh, bull market and remains unspent today. Despite relatively low on-chain activity, and the number of market fractals resembling bearish conditions, there remains an undertone of extreme hodling and accumulation behavior. This is somewhat unique to this market cycle and is a dynamic worth keeping an eye on. Now, on to the Lightning Network adoption. As stated before, this is a new feature that they'll probably be covering uh, more in their uh, insights every week. <clears throat> in the headlines this week is the adoption of Bitcoin's Lightning Network, primarily by El Salvador and by Twitter as an integrated payment feature. We have also released a suite of Lightning Network metrics to Glassnode Studio that helps describe the extraordinary growth of the protocol over recent months. The number of LN nodes is one of many metrics at an all-time high, reaching 15.6 thousand nodes this week. The number of LN channels have reached highs of 73,000, representing an average of 4.6 channels per node. This is around double the number of channels that were live through the period from 2019 to 2020, with most of this growth occurring since May 2021. That's impressive, a lot more channels. <clears throat> Total BTC capacity in LN channels has seen explosive growth over the last nine months, rising 170% in 2021 to reach 2904 BTC, uh, which is approximately 127 million. 514 of these coins were added to LN channels in September alone. Interesting. Finally, the mean and median channel size has been climbing steadily as adoption and confidence in the protocol grows. The average channel capacity is accelerating higher from the stable baseline of around 0 0.028 BTC in 2019 to 2020 to 0.04 BTC today. Median channel size has also lifted to 0.01 BTC, having risen notably through the July and August. The adoption and growth of the Lightning Network both via scaling out in El Salvador and in Twitter implementations is an exciting challenge for the industry. Be sure to check out our lightning metrics and dashboard to keep track of LN adoption and performance over the coming months. That is interesting. All right. Well, you know, as much as I'm not personally a fan of the Lightning Network, because uh, I don't feel like it's peer to peer, this is quite interesting. And uh, I suppose anything that gets us moving in a direction of adoption, I am behind. And we will see what develops along the way. Um, thank you so much for following along today. I appreciate it. Again, subscribe down below. Uh, Follow, click on the post notification so you know in the next video. Follow me on library and leave a comment. Just be civil in your discourse. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I love you all. Take care. Peace.